Welcome aboard. This is the MATLAB Coding Core series titled How to IMU Part 1 of 3. I'm your instructor, Steve, aka Heavy Hands. You'll understand how I got that nickname in just a minute. This series starts with a question. How do I get my IMU data in MATLAB? The problem that we encountered was that we couldn't really find any real tangible solutions on the internet of how to go from watch me move my IMU to this. There were plenty of people who said, watch me do it and watch me show you this, but nobody really explaining how they did it. So we're going to break it down how to IMU in MATLAB right now. The objectives of this part one are as follows. One, interface Arduino with MATLAB. Two, interface BNO055 IMU with Arduino and MATLAB. Three, calibrate IMU in MATLAB. Four, capture IMU data in MATLAB. Okay, the required hardware for this project will be an Arduino Uno, a prototype shield, not required, optional, but I do recommend it, a BNO055 nine axis inertial measurement unit, a miniature breadboard, and four jumper wires. I'm gonna say red, black, blue and green. You're going to peel the adhesive off the miniature breadboard, stick it on the prototype shield, and that's how you're going to put your system together. The required software is MATLAB 2020 A or B. You'll need the MATLAB support package for Arduino hardware toolbox, the sensor fusion and tracking toolbox, and the instrument control toolbox. The circuit layout is as follows. The VIN from BNO055 goes to the 5 volt on the Arduino. The ground from the BNO055 goes to the ground on the Arduino. The SDA from the BNO055 goes to the A4 on the Arduino. The SCL goes from the BNO055 to the A5 on the Arduino. All right, the coding core has three rules. Rule number one, do not rush towards failure. Two, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Three, drink plenty of water. Always a good idea. All right, call to orders. Activate your brain housing group. Open your long range visual scanning portholes and engage your primary weapon systems. Here we go. Objective one, interfacing Arduino with MATLAB. Let's go ahead and build this circuit up real quick. Miniature breadboard on the prototype shield, prototype shield on the Arduino Uno, BNO055 on the miniature breadboard, red, black, green and blue wires, your circuit should look exactly like this. You can use whatever wires you want, but for simplicity's sake, this is what it should look like. Next, you can go ahead and plug in your system. And we are going to start with a variable. It's A equals Arduino. If this is the first time you're plugging in your Arduino to the MATLAB, you will need to do an opposite over here at the command window. That's Arduino setup. That window will pop up when it's ready for a hardware setup. You'll choose USB. And then MATLAB is going to tell you to specify what board type you have and what COM port. If you're using a PC, it will be COM3, COM5, something. On a Mac, it will be the longer device port name, USB modem. All right, so we're going to select the UNO. We are going through the following port. We need the I squared C, the SPI the servo, and the Adafruit BNO055. You go ahead and click Program. This usually does take a few minutes. This is uploading the server code onto the Arduino board. That's going to allow it to communicate with MATLAB.
it usually does two updates to the board. All right, that's the first one. And yes, here comes the second one. Okay. If I were better with movie editing, I would have cropped this out for you, but I'm not here to do movie editing. I'm here to do MATLAB, so this may take a few minutes. I guess I have a few minutes. Success, click next to proceed. You can go ahead and test your connection here if you want to, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to. You can see my four libraries are on board. I'm going to click next. I do not need to see examples because we are writing an original script and I can click finish. All right, objective one interface Arduino with MATLAB. That is a variable A is equal to Arduino. You can run that section. MATLAB is going to find the Arduino Uno board, place it in your workspace in the following port, the Uno board, pins available, and the libraries uploaded to the board. That's great. That's objective one. You can go ahead and clear your command window, and we will move on. Objective 2, interface the BNO055IMU with Arduino. That is also going to include a new variable. We're going to say IMU is equal to BNO055 of A. Go ahead and run that section. The IMU is going to appear in the command window and in the workspace as a BNO055 with the following properties. The operating mode NDOF 9 degrees of freedom. The I squared C address standard at 0 by 28. Your pins are there. Now, here, sample read 100 per second. Samples per read is 10. So these 100 are going to be compiled into 10, and our read mode is going to be latest, as in the most recent. So we can go ahead and carry on. Objective 3 to calibrate the IMU in MATLAB we are going to create a variable status is equal to the following command read calibration status IMU when you calibrate one of these IMUs you're going to go ahead and point the X direction towards north then you are going to give it 45 degrees on the X axis And then you're going to give it 45 degrees in the opposite direction on the x-axis. And then you are going to give it 45 degrees one way in the y-axis. And then 45 degrees the other way in the y-axis. And then we are going to give it a full 360 degree z-axis rotation and then maybe a little flip okay and then I'm just gonna go ahead and set it back down on a flat surface and I'm going to read the calibration status of the IMU let's see I got all four of them if they aren't calibrated it will say uncalibrated partial or full is acceptable for this as time continues to go forward 
it'll calibrate itself as you go so these will eventually become full but in order to get an accurate measurement on the next section you need at least partial or full here and again your status variable is here so we are good to go let's carry on objective four we want to capture IMU data in MATLAB okay we are going to do that as a table we're going to call it IMU read is going to be equal to read IMU now when I execute this command here I am going to get those 10 samples as a table with timestamps you can see the time interval is at a, ten, a 0 0.1 second intervals there I'm getting my 10 and I'm going to get the following data my acceleration in meters per second squared in the X Y and Z well it's just resting flat on my table now so X not really doing much Y not really doing much Z 9.8 ish for gravity yep we are in the ballpark angular velocity that's my gyroscope that will be measured in radians per second again not doing much really in any axis so we're not going to see much there the magnetic field is coming in in micro teslas x y and z i am about 45 degrees off from my north position the way i was holding it so we are in the ballpark there too orientation this is a very unique feature of the BNO055 it has an onboard filter that automatically calculates the orientation for you in the Z Y X let me say that one more time Z Y X okay this is coming in in radians right now so it looks like my Z I'm off by about five radians from zero and my table is pretty much flat because it's Z Y X okay I'm glad we had that talk next let's talk about this now this table data is great it's clean but it's a little much so if I just wanted a one-time shot read how do I get that if I, I this is too much this is all too much I need to suppress this it's it's making me dizzy it's too much data okay what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take that table from the read IMU command and I'm gonna make it into a matrix I'm going to say that IMU matrix is equal to IMU read except as a matrix okay by doing that I'm gonna be able to call out the columns much easier going forward so with that now I have that same table just without all the labels and it's just going to be a, a big old matrix so I'm going to go ahead and say that the IMU mean is equal to the mean of the IMU matrix and that is how I'm going to get singular pieces of data for all of my sensors let's go ahead and give that a shot I'm resting it flat on the table and I'm pointing it to north as best I can when I run that section I get 12 columns let's go ahead and widen this up just a little bit that will actually make for a better rationale okay good my IMU mean matrix which was a mean function of an IMU read table converted into a matrix produces 12 columns of data this does not include the timestamps anymore that's the difference between the table and the matrix so now columns 1 through 9 let's see column 1 column 2 column 3 acceleration X Y Z 9.8 for Z very good columns 4 5 6 gyroscope X Y Z very good next one is going to be magnetometer x y z well i'm off it it slid a little bit on my table I'm, I'm off again x y and z and the 10 11 and 12 columns will be orientation in radians z y x so at least in this plane my table is pretty flat good
Now, there's going to be things we're going to add to this in the next two parts of our series here. But just to give you a little bit of foreshadowing, why don't we go ahead and just reconvert the IMU mean back into a table. So we'll just call that the IMU table that we really want to see is going to be array to table of the IMU mean with variable names of first one is going to be a c c x and then we're going to have a c c y and we're going to have a c c z then we're going to have gyro x gyro y and gyro z followed by magnetometer x magnetometer y and magnetometer z those will be followed by the orientation z orientation y orientation x very good we'll go ahead and close that I want to see that table so let's go ahead and run our section here I get a 1 by 12 table acceleration XYZ gyroscope XYZ magnetometer XYZ orientation ZYX very good now if we want to test it let's go ahead and give this a shot let's just test our x-axis for a second I'm gonna hold this nice and flat right here clear that and I'm gonna go ahead and try to tilt this to about 45 degrees is it right about there ish and let's run it again well my x-axis and my y-axis accelerations will change this is no longer going to be 9.8 it's going to be a trigonometric function of that 9.8 gyro is going to change slightly not much magnetometer maybe slightly not much but let's check out what's going on here we have the orientation z y and x y is still pretty close to zero z didn't really change much but big change on the x remember this is in radians so if we wanted to let's just go ahead and try something for fun here and let's just call out the orientation we're going to need three variables ORTX, ORTY, ORTZ, ORTX is coming in in radians and it's going to be equal to the IMU mean all of the rows in the 12th column the orientation Y in radians is going to be coming in as the IMU mean all of the columns in the 11th the orientation of Z is going to be coming in as radians IMU mean in the tenth because orientation comes in as Z Y X okay now I'm gonna make a matrix orientation matrix is equal to ORT X ORT Y and ORTZ. Now let's go ahead and clear that. And I need to define those variables. ORTX is going to be equal to ORTX radians times 180 divided by 3.14159 or pi. ORTY is going to be equal to ORTY radians times 180 divided by 3.14159 ORTZ is going to be equal to ORTZ in radians 
times 180 divided by 3.14159. Good. Now, let's go ahead and be a little more specific. Just so we don't get lost. And let's update. We can make this a little wider. And we're back to sharing. Let's take it from the top here. This objective four is the real meat and potatoes of part one. It starts with an IMU read. This is a basic read of all the data in the IMU streamed at 100 per second, compiled into 10 samples in a table. We're going to take that table, we're going to convert it to a matrix. We're going to take that matrix and we're going to take the mean of each column. Then we're going to take the mean values and we're going to rearrange them into a table with the following variable names. That's just going to be our basic read one time of our IMU. Next, we talked about dialing in on specific sensors within the IMU. So right now we're talking about the orientation. The orientation exists in the IMU matrix and the IMU mean matrix in the 10th, 11th, and 12th columns as Z, Y, and X. So if I want the X axis in radians from this IMU, then I am creating a variable called orientation. X radians is equal to the IMU mean matrix of the singular values, all of them in the 12th column. My orientation Y radians is going to be equal to the IMU mean in the 11th column. The orientation Z radians as the IMU mean in the, in the 10th column. Next, I'm going to create three more variables where I'm going to convert those radian values into degrees. So orientation x degrees is going to be equal to orientation x radians times 180 over pi. Orientation y degrees is going to be equal to orientation y radians times 180 over pi. Orientation z degrees is going to be equal to orientation z radians times 180 over pi. And then I'm creating my orientation matrix. My orientation matrix is going to contain orientation x degrees, orientation y degrees, and orientation z degrees. So now it's going to make a little bit more sense to us as we're used to seeing x on the left, x, y, z. It's going to display that way now. And let's just go ahead and display our orientation matrix. Okay, so like I said, let's go nice and flat, and let's, we don't need to see the big table, right? Okay. Negative 4, 15, 295. Let's find that 360-ish. I'm close. Oh, too far. There I am. Okay, can I level out the x-axis? Let's see. Okay. Can I level out the y? Oh, come on. Can we get some zeros here? Some 360 and some zeros? Oh, I'm so close. Let's find out what my table really is. If I just put this flat on my work table here and run it, let's see. My table is angled at 334 degrees. So I am, what's that going to be? 26, 26 degrees off of true north. And I am tilted 1.125 degrees in the x-axis and negative 1.125 degrees in the y-axis. So uh, using my phone as the example, if this was nice and flat and perfect, I'm off by one in the x and then one in the y and then 26 in the z. What I'm going to show you in the next section is how to take this and make it go like this, except way faster and without doing it manually. Thanks for joining in. We'll see you soon.